and welcome back. So you'll be happy to know that this is the last video on mass spectrometry and we're going to look at the mass spectra of diatomic molecules. So hopefully by the end of this video you should be able to work out and be able to represent the different ions produced from diatomic molecules during mass spectrometry. You should be able to sketch a mass spectra of a diatomic molecule. So from previous videos, you should be aware of what isotopes are. Okay, They have the same number of protons, hence they are the same element, but they have different numbers of neutrons, hence they have a different mass number. So during this video, we're going to focus on chlorine. Now chlorine is obviously Cl2, it's a diatomic gas. If we're focusing on the mass spectrum, we need to be thinking about different combinations of isotopes that can be contained in molecules of chlorine. So, major isotopes are chlorine-35 and chlorine-37. So when we're thinking about the peaks in a mass spectrum, we need to consider both of these isotopes. For instance, you could get this ion. Now remember, the ions which are interpreted in a mass spectrum are always positive. And this one contains two atoms of the chlorine-35 isotope. Now because we have a singly charged ion, the mass to charge ratio is equal to 70. Okay, but this is not the only combination we could have. We could also have this combination, which gives us a mass to charge ratio of 74. But we could have mixtures of both, with the combination giving us a mass to charge ratio of 72. So, is that all our combinations? Actually, no. This is the part people always forget. Now, this may look like exactly the same molecule, and it is, okay? But, we have to include it twice. The reason for that is that statistically, the combination of chlorine-35 and chlorine-37 is twice as likely as the others, the two chlorine-35s or the two chlorine-37s, to occur. And that is because, technically, you could have the first atom being 35 and the second being 37, or you could have the first atom being 37 and the second one being 35. Whilst this doesn't matter chemically, statistically, it is more likely to come up twice as much as the others. Therefore, it is important to how our mass spectrum looks. Now, incidentally, before we move on to the actual mass spectrum, I just want you to draw your attention to how I've written these species. I've put the major species in brackets, and I've included the mass number of each of the atoms, and I've put the positive charge. People always drop marks when they're naming species by not putting the positive charge. It is only the positive ions which get to the end of the mass spectrometer and are detected. So any species causing a peak on the mass spectrum are positively charged, and you must put that in your answers. People always lose marks of this just because they forget to put on the charge. They do the hard bit, but they don't get full marks. So make sure you put the positive charge. Okay, so let's have a look at the basic mass spectrum for this sample. So on the y-axis, you should know that is relative abundance. And on the x-axis, it's our mass to charge ratio. Now I'm going to put some numbers on the x-axis. Obviously this is being done completely accurately, but it should be good enough to explain the point. Okay, so we've set up our basic mass spectrum. Okay, now we have two peaks which come up once at 70 and 74. Now in reality, they won't be exactly the same height, but for the purposes of this type of question in your AS exam, you put them at the same height because you get about the same 
amount of each of these. And the height is representing the amount within the sample. Now 72 comes up twice as much. Hence the line is twice as high. Okay, so this is the basic pattern you would get for a diatomic molecule of chlorine. Okay, you get your three lines, the central one being twice as high as the others at 70, 72 and 74. You may also be asked to draw the other peaks involved. Remember, you could get fragmentation. So you might get a peak at 35 and a peak at 37. You might also get peaks for if the ion is 2 plus, because remember it's a mass to charge ratio. So whatever the mass is divided by charge. So there are other peaks which could be included. So if they've put in an axis which extends far beyond the 70, 72 and 74, they may be looking for some of these peaks as well. But the main point of this video is to make sure you know about the pattern which has been displayed here with the different combinations for the actual ions of the diatomic molecule. So hopefully you should be able to work out and represent the different species which are produced and detected during mass spectrometry. And hopefully you should be able to sketch mass spectra for these diatomic molecules, remembering the pattern and the differences in relative abundance. If you're unclear about any of this, you can watch a video again and make sure you ask me about it in class.